7 a.m. There's supposed to be mountains all over here. Great big mountains that you can see. All shrouded by misty clouds. I guess you could say that it's the same way that um, human potential is shrouded by uh, the mist of ignorance. <laughs> Just kidding, we're not gonna go there. Not yet, at least. And even if that were the case, it's all part of the natural process, isn't it? You know, one day, through natural means, the mist is going to clear and um, things will look better. Maybe. Alright, well, if you're watching this video, then I'm hoping that you've seen my previous video about the fork on the road. If you haven't, then I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, this isn't gonna make much sense. Don't watch this video unless you've watched that video first. So, because I, I just want to talk a little bit more in depth about what's going on, what is this, what does it mean for life and all that. And um, more that you can do to go more in depth about this is actually read Peter Kingsley's book Reality, which is where I found out about this. So I started reading it last winter and it warned you it warned you at the beginning it said that you're either going to dismiss all of this as bullshit and that he's full of shit or you're going to be completely changed forever with no way back <laughs> and boy was he right he was very right this isn't i mean you might think that this is all about just like cool philosophy you know i'm in a philosophical mood and something cool to talk about at the dinner table but this is more than that this is actually how reality truly is that's what it's about and i tend to be a very careful person when it comes to believing things immediately because uh, i like to keep an open mind and also be very uh, skeptical but something happened when i read this book so it's just i've read a lot of philosophy a lot of different kinds of of creation stories theories about the world and all that and time but when I was reading this book it's like I started to feel high <laughs> just by reading the book or at least super conscious and honest about my life like I didn't when I was starting when I start to read the book it's like I don't mean for myself to have any life realizations like oh I should fix this I should do this but every time I did start to read the book that happened I had to put it down and I had to be like, what the hell is going on? And I think that's because Peter Kingsley is unironically a magician. And his words are incantations meant to charm you, to, to deceive you out of deception, right? So deceive you out of being deceived. And so my previous video was mostly just about the first part of the book, the way that reality is shaped. It, I didn't talk about what you should do with this information, right? And I actually have a text here written by my best friend, my partner in crime, and uh, Mirror Soul, who read this book. And after she read this book, I asked her, what's your take on it, right? And she sent, she sh I can't talk. And she sent me this <coughs> text, which I think nails it perfectly. So she says, well, he's trying to wake us up by giving us reality, realizing that we are divine beings of God trapped in a deceptive illusion, thinking that what we think we know is real, but we know nothing. Then he offers the solution to set us free, to realize the truth. We are creatures of deception and so it's our nature. He has to deceive us to lift the spell of deception. The solution as Empedocles describes it is stillness stillness through the use of the senses being completely taken by the illusion to set us free declutter our minds he's basically giving us permission to be deceived but still nurture the seed of divinity inside of us so that it can grow into a tree because everything that we see are growing from that tree everything is us our illusion and we're all alone <laughs> we need to become mad we friends strive to escape the illusion where we think we know everything by being here fully. And the only answer to that is stillness. That's the last and only point. Stillness. 
by adapting that we are more conscious than everyone else. What? Sorry. <laughs> what are you writing, Elvira? By adapting that we are more conscious than everyone else, so absorbed into the illusion that we come out the other side, truly experiencing reality. Okay, right. <clears throat> and that's very, um, very interesting that she says coming out the other side. Because as far as I know, the person who wrote this is not aware of Kabbalah and all these um, occult mystic ideas at all but uh, she somehow still understood that by embracing this illusion that we live in fully you come out the other side towards spirit and that is one of the number one key points of the Kabbalistic tree of life I'm gonna go find a spot where there's a bit more peace because there's like, too many cars and people walking their dogs and, and I just hit jackpot. <laughs> Look at this. Mm. Oh my god. Oh. I'm going to get this video demonetized. I've been living in Norway on my own for about a month. It's working. And um quite lonely here guys <laughs> wow maybe that's why I'm making these videos to feel like I'm actually talking to someone anyways we gotta keep going oh no oh there's more wow some people say you should worry about worms I don't know man extra protein this video is gonna be a lot longer than I intended okay that's enough we gotta go look at this Beautiful. All right, I guess I'm just gonna speak about this here. All right, so the Kabbalistic Tree of Life is a Jewish system of mystic theory where the Tree of Life itself is a map of the body of God. Now, always remember the quote, the map isn't the territory, right? It's a map. It's meant to... Oh, Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> it's meant to show us the way around it doesn't actually make it the way it truly is when you map something out it's it doesn't reflect exactly every single detail about it it's a map okay so always remember that some people take it too seriously like oh you, you know language I'm like shut up okay so the absolute the true one god uh, as he truly is encompasses this whole tree okay uh, he is this entire tree. It is he, she, whatever. It's not the point. The point is that as creation, quote unquote, begins, uh, Keter, the first Sephiroth, as we call these these um, orbs, the first Sephiroth comes into being. Unity, the one. The one becoming aware of itself. Awareness itself as when you're sitting and you're meditating and you become aware of yourself you are two beings so it creates polarity that's the first thing that's created it creates number two chokmah and the relationship between chokmah and keter is bina that's the number three the number three is the relationship itself uh, this is very oversimplifying it and anyways a bunch of things happen and creation goes down in a spiral down all the way towards Malkut which is our world dangling down at the very bottom of the tree like an afterthought of creation now a lot of people see this and they go oh you know it makes us seem so insignificant and you know materialism we need to we need to get out of mater the material world the material world is so low and we need to go back up on the tree but that's a mistake 
by embracing the illusion fully you come out the other side because when you're the lowest down think of it circularly as i said in my previous video everything can be just represented by a circle and there's nothing outside the circle and nothing does not exist so if everything is circular if you're the lowest down you're also more in contact with the highest one by going into the deepest depths of darkness that's where ironically that's where you'll find the light that's what this whole thing is about and so i'm going to read up another text that she wrote um, she's really good at writing poetry all of a sudden after reading the book and she writes about this whole thing much better than i do she explains it much better and beautifully the flow of water down the mountain is a constant it doesn't care about our prophetic human problems we create for ourselves it is simply waiting for us to be with it surrendering to that constant beautiful flow letting go of control and removing the fog of ego covering our eyes to see i give up and thus i am free yet being free is an illusion but a pretty one we're trapped either way there's only one way to go we tend to think that there are many or fail to see any at all and the way to go is the path leading back to wherever we are there our human problems are waiting for us once again for they pathetic and illusory as they may be yet so unavoidably important are part of the illusion that is you that's what we call life so once again you can't this isn't asceticism this is in a way descendism is that even a word i don't know you descend to the deep steps you don't escape people think oh we gotta escape the illusion we gotta escape the matrix there is no escape in the matrix the only way to quote unquote escape the matrix is embrace it fully always remember though that there are two matrices and the only one we can actually do something about and we should do something about is the plato's cave type of matrix that comes in the form of societal pressure or social expectations and so on you can't let these limit a full human experience if it is limiting you it is your responsibility to break out of it but then it is not enough to just break out of plato's cave you have to also understand that the world outside of the cave is also an illusion in the literal sense it's not a metaphor anymore this is what mystics throughout all ages have been talking about since the beginning of time that when you stop thinking so much and sit down in stillness and observe the world around you and your place in it you realize that it's all illusory and that's not necessarily a bad thing think of it like this you escape plato's cave and then you realize that even the world outside of that is also an illusion of the senses but there's nothing you can do about escaping it so you drink that illusion to the dregs you go deep in the depths of it to find your true will and live it out think of it like water reflecting everything on the surface when the water is very still the reflection is almost perfect but sometimes the stillness is disturbed and sometimes that is because we lack concentration but sometimes it's also for no choice of our own it's just the weather like the rain or it's insects and fishes on the water where's people throwing rocks in the water you know it's not always our choice sometimes we can really try to be still but the season doesn't allow for it and that's okay but our job then is to try our best at all times to achieve stillness so that we can see clearly that everything is just a reflection and nothing more so how do you do this well as much as i hate it is through mindfulness and the reason why i hate it is because it's become such a buzzword these days everybody talks about mindfulness but you can't really avoid buzzwords in the spiritual community these days but everybody talks about you know living in the now and being mindful and doing mindfulness meditation here and there and all that but if everybody that was doing mindfulness meditation was actually mindful the world wouldn't really look the way it does now so something is clearly wrong it's not enough to do mindfulness meditation 15 20 minutes 30 minutes and then go back to being the same person who you normally are bombarded by your thoughts unable to control them and i'm not saying that you need to do mindfulness meditation for longer than that what i'm saying 
is that when a time comes, you won't even need to do mindfulness meditation at all. What are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. You can just be mindful, centered, present, and focused while you're going about doing everything that you normally do day to day. You can do your dishes without allowing your thoughts to take you somewhere else. Because when you are thinking about being somewhere else, you are there. And so most of us are never here now. When you're at work, you're thinking about what you're going to do when you get home. And then when you're home, you're thinking about what you're going to do at work. I mean, it's kind of funny, but it's a shame because we were put here for the objective to experience the subjective. The absolute mind wants us to experience this reflection fully. I mean, imagine if you were the universe, an infinite being that is experiencing the past, present and the future simultaneously in one single moment that is never ending and eternal. Since time is one for you, movement doesn't happen and everything is still. Wouldn't you want to experience the universe subjectively, where past, present and future are seemingly separate and things actually seem to be moving from one place to the next? What better way to do that than in the human experience? This might be what the Bible means when it says God created man in his own image. As far as we know, we might just be the only living beings in the universe who are able to see and interact with the world so fully. This is an experience to be cherished, treasured. A human experience is a once in a universal lifetime chance to marvel at the beauty of the objective big picture and also experience it subjectively. To move, to sweat from a heavy workout, to eat delicious foods, to dance, to love. We have to be open to the idea that our life might not belong to us but to the gods. Your body is not your temple, it's an observatory. When we look at the stars and wander, it's just the universe looking at itself through us. But we have to be present and actually observe. Not let the mind wander here and there, but have a constant sharp focus on the senses and what they offer us. And so again, the human experience is a chance for us to experience the world fully. We can go swimming, we can fly, we can just be on the ground with our feet touching the grass and truly feeling it without letting our thoughts take us somewhere else, but be there now at all times. Because it might just be an illusion, but it's real to you. And that actually reminds me of a Conan quote where he says that I know this, if life is an illusion, then I am no less an illusion. And being thus, the illusion is real to me. Let me live while I live. Let me know the rich juices of red meat and stinging wine on my palate, the hot embrace of white arms, the mad exaltation of battle when the blue blades flame and crimson. And I am content. I live, I burn with life, I love, I slay, and am content. So what this is all about is exercising your true will. It's like Alistair Crowley said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And contrary to what many people believe about this quote, it doesn't mean that you can go ahead and be a self-centered hedonistic person doing whatever you want. It's not about what you want, it's about what your will is. And finding your true will, for that first, you need stillness. You need to go down to the deepest depths of the earth to find your true will and then do it. And you can't allow anything to hold you back from doing it. Because this is your divine purpose here on earth. You are the universe completing itself through your experience. Because without everything being and every opportunity having have happened, everything that has the potential of happening has to happen for everything to be everything. The all can't be the all if all hasn't happened within it. So your unique experience is necessary for the all, the universe, to be complete. And having this realization puts a tremendous responsibility on your shoulders. You suddenly realize what you really are and it's simultaneously serious, but it also makes everything all the more fun when you actually start to exercise your true will. And you need to be doing all of this with hyper focus, being conscious of it, because falling away from the path of your true will is extremely easy to do. And unfortunately, that's why most people still find themselves on the crossroads without knowing that they're there. And all of this that I'm talking about isn't really anything new. It's been around. It's what every religion, every mystical society has been trying to say since the beginning of time, that you just need to live life fully and live it well, according to your true will. 
subconsciously, but I didn't really get it before. And I think most people don't get it. And for me, what worked was Peter Kingsley's book, Reality, that interpreted Parmenides' poem on nature. And now that I see it, I see the same message everywhere else. Whatever other mystical, esoteric text that I read, I see this message in it and I can't unsee it. And I don't know why it was specifically reality that worked for me, but it did. And maybe it might work for you too. And that's why I'm making these videos is because it's not that well known and I just wish to put it out there because perhaps it might just bring us closer to completing the circle.